Ending Crew and welcome to today's video where we are going to talk about sepsis. What it is, what the signs are, and why it's important to catch it. If you know our story, you know why this is such an important video for me to make. If you don't know our story, my name is Stephanie and recently my 17 year old spent almost three weeks in the hospital. Two of those three weeks were spent in the ICU. He was put on a ventilator because he went into septic shock. My son's story is very complex, so we're just gonna stick to just the sepsis in this video, but if you're wanting to watch more about his story, I'll link it in one of the quarters. A little backstory is he got his wisdom teeth removed on October 21st. By Halloween, I had realized that he'd come down with some kind of sickness, but I figured it was just really bad timing, a cough or cold that was coming on, as he was my child that hardly ever got sick. I do remember the day that he called me on November 14th, and told me that he couldn't breathe. Obviously there's a lot more in between, but I remember this specifically because I told his dad that he either needed to take him to the ER or I was calling 911. His dad and I are separated. He was living with his dad at the time. You know, when they say like a mother's just know, they just know. I just knew something was severely wrong when 20 minutes had passed since they had left to go to the hospital and no one was answering their phones. And I just had this sinking feeling in my stomach that something was significantly wrong. Finally, I got a call from my son's cell phone, but it was his dad on the end and not my son, when he told me that his oxygen was 85% and they had told him that Lonnie Jr. was septic. I feel like we all have an idea that being septic is bad. Like it's a bad thing. It's nothing good. You don't hear good things about it on TVs and movies, but a lot of us don't know what it means, what it is, and what the signs actually are. At least I certainly didn't. So what is sepsis? Sepsis is where an infection starts off and then it eventually releases toxins into your blood that causes inflammation in your entire body. Now, the amount of time from when you have that infection to where sepsis occurs can vary. Once you are septic, it can progress so, so, so quickly. They had told us that he was stage one sepsis Monday night, and by Wednesday night, he was in stage three septic shock and needing to be ventilated. And I almost feel like had we not been in the hospital setting, it could have been moved faster than that. But he was on supplemental oxygen along with antibiotics, trying to get the infection under control. Now, before going into the three stages of sepsis, please understand that these are off of my experience and things that I've researched. If you are a medical professional and you want to add your own view and things that you have experienced while working with other patients, please, please, please do so. These are things that are easily Googleable. I am not adding anything in that I have not seen a million times on medical websites. But with that disclosure out of the way, there are three stages of sepsis. Stage one is when it starts, you have inflammation all over your body. In order to be considered septic, you do have to have an infection a high heart rate, fast breathing, and a fever. There are some tests, they did run some, but I don't know what those exact tests are. So this is just when you have inflammation from the immune system. Severe sepsis and septic shock are very similar. So severe sepsis is when you are experiencing organ failure. Now they said Lonnie was stage one, but he was already experiencing failure within his lungs. So I kind of think he might've been stage two, but that's just what they said that he was stage one. Stage one is inflammation all over your body, stage two, now organs are being impacted. This can look like decreased urine, low platelet counts, breathing problems, low oxygen. This person or yourself might have extreme weakness, chills, or trouble waking them up. If you know that you have an infection or maybe you don't know, you just have like an off and on fever and then you're having any issues with breathing, a high heart rate, anything like that, it is best to just go to the hospital. Sepsis can be very, very, very quick. Like my son's vitals were literally like 94 to 96% on one liter of oxygen and within hours, his vitals were tanking. Stage three is septic shock. And this is when your body is essentially shutting down. That's the nicest way I can say that. There is a 40% mortality rate with septic shock. Sometimes what happens is we don't realize that someone is septic, and so maybe they're still trying to treat those symptoms at home, and they go into septic shock and they're not in a hospital. Like, I can't even imagine, like I literally have chili bumps just thinking about what that would have looked like had Lonnie not been in the hospital. I forgot to actually talk about like what happened before Lonnie went into septic shock. I'm sharing this because I want anyone else 
that might see these symptoms on someone that has an infection to kind of know that it could be them or their loved ones going to septic shock. Now, hopefully you're in a hospital setting and this doesn't happen at home, but some of the things that we noticed was his O2 and blood pressure and heart rate became very, very unstable, meaning it would go super high. Like his heart rate would go in the 160s, his blood pressure would be like 210 over 105, his O2 would be good, and then suddenly it would just crash down super fast. I think one time he had gotten up to go to the bathroom and it dropped to like 73%. For no reason, he was just walking around. Same thing with his, his blood pressure, his heart rate. One time his heart rate dropped down in the 50s. We thought the machine was broken because his heart rate had stayed between like 140 and 160 the entire time. So just very unstable vitals is a really, really, really big sign. But for him, he had, I don't wanna say it's unique because it can happen, it's a thing, but essentially he started to lose CO2. He became very short of breath and this would happen when his o2 looked fine he presented like asthmatic in order for him to breathe it was more like <sighs> very fast shallow breathing he felt like he couldn't breathe deeper i would do like breathing exercises and meditation with him and he still really struggled with this and the more that time went on the worse it got to a point where he was hyperventilating he couldn't sleep because of it it was keeping him awake essentially the doctor said that the reason he couldn't sleep was because it was his body keeping him alive had he went to sleep he wouldn't have woken up shortness of breath even if their o2 looks fine especially if it's very erratic breathing is definitely a sign that something is happening and essentially his co2 was just dropping and dropping and dropping until a point where he became delirious so this is going to be different than mental confusion this isn't like oh why am i here like what am i doing i don't know what's going on or acting a little bit different as far behavior but this was where he was literally just not mentally there is the best way to say it. He was trying to pull the cords out. He said that now he looks back and it was because he just wanted to run and go home and go to sleep because he had been sleeping for a while. There was a thinking behind it, but it's not going to come across as anything rational, not like typical behavior for that person and almost like they're mentally not computing and there with you. Not everyone that's septic or goes into septic shock needs to be put on the ventilator, but it can be something that needs to happen and it was life-saving for my son. All right, back to Stephanie in the past. The biggest difference between level two and level three is with level three, your blood pressure is going to start dropping and it's going to drop rapidly, which can cause a lot of problems. When Lonnie had to be ventilated, they had him on a lot of blood pressure meds to keep his blood pressure stable for 24 hours before they were trying to extubate him. And in our case, the problem was that we didn't actually know he had an infection. I feel like if someone knows that they have pneumonia or or a UTI and then suddenly they're having trouble breathing and their, their fever won't go down like it's going to be kind of common sense okay we've got to go to the doctors or the hospital but the issue is is when you don't know that you have an infection and you have these so high heart rate fever low oxygen and low oxygen can sometimes feel like you can't take a deep breath or you feel like you can't excel so in my son's case he said that he could take a deep breath but he said he felt like he couldn't push the air out. And this can also show as someone who has mental confusion. I personally believe that Lonnie Jr. was probably septic for quite a few days before he started to become short of breath. Just from things that he had told me that he told his dad that I was just like, oh, that's bad. One of them is definitely just being confused. Somehow made it to the kitchen and his dad had asked him what he was doing in there. And he was like, what am I doing in here? Why am I in here? Like very confused and just very out of it. Follow your gut, follow your gut because you have to understand like when someone gets septic, they're very sick. They may not be like, oh yeah, I'm feeling these symptoms. I'm septic, let me go to the doctors. So fever, high heart rate, low oxygen, trouble breathing at all, um, and any known infection, or maybe they just have seemed sick for a while. Lonnie Jr. did have an off and on fever for like a week before he went to the hospital apparently. So he would get a fever and break a fever, get a fever, break a fever, and he wouldn't take Tylenol. So his fever was breaking on his own, which was basically his body 
trying to fight back, but it just couldn't. Now, I don't know if that had to do with sepsis or if that was from his disease that he has, but regardless, I wanted to mention that, that it's just gonna be like, just not your average things. I think constantly, what if he would have got help sooner? Because his oxygen on the Friday before he went in was 92% at the doctor's. So somewhere between Friday and Monday, he went downhill very, very quickly. The treatment for sepsis is to take care of the infection. The infection is what caused it to start off with. So they're gonna usually start with antibiotics depending on what type of infection that they think that you have. Steroids will probably be a part of that regimen and also supplemental oxygen if you are having trouble breathing, which most people who are septic do. I hope this video was informative. Again, I am not a medical health professional, but I do want to share this because I feel like a lot of people don't understand what sepsis is and why it's so important. So I hope this helps and we will see you guys later. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings.